Thanks for having me. Great to see you. How was uh, high school football in Pittsburgh growing up? Was it as big a deal as I know El Equipper and some of those cities are just huge high school football towns? Right. Actually, you know, actually, I uh, played my high school ball outside Philly. I was born in the Pittsburgh area, uh -huh. but moved around and then settled in the Philadelphia area. And it is big. It is real big up there. Um, but it's so um, different from the South. So different. And especially back 20 years ago, right. I mean, the game was different. I mean, I ran a wing T offense. <laughs> I had to beg my coach my senior year to throw it 15 times a game. and uh, Did he make it happen for you? Yeah, of course. Of course. What but do you mean, of course? Like you were running the show? <laughs> At that point, yeah, just about. <laughs> you were uh, LeBron. How was your high school team? How, how well did you do? Uh, we won nine games. We were nine and three. But here's the thing. My, my league was only four teams. So to go and find out-of-conference games, we had to go over to Jersey, go to Delaware, find some of those really good schools to go play over there. And... Uh, you know, it was tough, but um, so you know, did we you, had a pretty good team. But I, it, what you had, you had to do, you had 40 teams in our district, and only four made the playoffs. Wow. So if you didn't run the table, you weren't, you didn't have a shot. Did wow. you get enough reps throwing it to get the – were you a scholarship Virginia player? Yes. It, and that a lot of it was based on, on, well, obviously a big guy, good arm, all that stuff. Did you get enough of a chance? Were you ever worried that – I may not get to play at my highest level because I'm just not getting the opportunity to showcase myself. No, I never was worried about that. I mean, it was something, I think a lot of it's with the recruiting and things yeah. like that, especially at times based on projecting right. potential you look like and a size and uh, ability. And, and we were efficient. We, we did what we could and we threw it. But uh, So anywhere besides Virginia in the mix? There was a bunch of schools, a few of the ACC. Uh, my final choice was kind of the... Virginia, Purdue at the time, Drew Brees was there. I could have followed him, and then North Carolina was in the mix. Um, so there's a fair amount of schools. Multi-sport athlete, I would imagine. Yes, basketball and baseball as well. Pitcher. Dude, what's your, Pitcher. What, wow. what's your hoop game? How tall are you? 6'5". Uh, He's six, five. So, Easy. six five. What kind of high school basketball career? Uh, pretty good. Uh, we had a stud on our team who ended up going to uh, uh, play in college. Uh, for me, I knew I was going to be playing football, so... Um, I kind of shut down any basketball opportunities, but uh, it was pretty good. Average about 18 a game. So quarterback controversies, right? Okay. You have been, I wouldn't say you've been in the level of, I don't know, uh, Doug Flutie and Rob Johnson in Buffalo where it was just like bananas. Yeah. But in Virginia, you shared time early, right? Yes. As a sophomore, there was a guy that came in with me um, who was a, who could throw it, but was more of a runner athlete type. So we were kind of contrasting styles. Were you alternating? We did my sophomore year. We kind of, I started the first game of the year and then we kind of went back and forth. And then later on in the year, I took the reins and, and finished out the season. And then he ended up transferring uh, to Richmond after that sophomore season. So uh, you've been in that environment before, right? Mm -hmm. um, your environment with Mike Vick here, though, it wasn't a quarterback controversy there. I mean, he was the babe, the boy. Right. Absolutely. So you needed a couple of games, and I think Finneran was a part of maybe the game that really changed everything, which was the Patriots game, where both you guys had great games, right? Yeah, he, you know, Finn was a big part of uh, our team and our offense and, and everything that happened in our locker room. But, yeah, coming in, I knew when I was drafted that, you know, it was Mike Vick's team. It was his, at that time, I mean, it was it was Mike Vick, and, and there was no controversy. I was trying to come in and just – get my feet on the ground and, and get to know the game and, and develop as a quarterback. So when I did get an opportunity, I kind of knew how I wanted to approach it, how I wanted to handle things. Um, and that's what was great about coming to the Atlanta Falcons at that time because I had a guy like Mike Vick that I could learn, you know, what I, how I wanted to approach my game prep, how he handled the media, how he handled just the guys in the locker room and everything game plan. And so I learned a lot from him as well as we were a very veteran team at that point. So I could watch – Guys like Brian Finner and Keith Brooking, Warwick Dunn, and just Algie Crumpler and figure out, okay, look at these guys who are the best at what they do. I want to get to that point. And so I just watched them and tried to, you know, mold my game from that. That game, uh, Shabby went 18-34 for 300 yards and three touchdowns. And I had, I think, one of my four or five hundred-yard games in my career as awesome. well. Yeah, sweet. How many catches? Five for 103, and I had a sweet post route. It was perfectly thrown ball. Got to tackle on the five-yard line, I think. I did. I did. Yeah, Thank no you for speed. bringing that up. Cover zero. Zero speed. <laughs> zero speed. Asante Samuel, I think, was in was in coverage. I believe so. If I'm not I mistaken. I have a nice pitcher to prove it. But Shabby took advantage of his opportunity. And that's what you got to do when you're in these things. I want to go back to the quarterback deal because Georgia's in a similar situation. Uh, going into that recruiting process, mm -hmm. Georgia's got a problem right now with trying to get quarterbacks to come in and play for them, especially top and four five star guys, because they got two five stars sitting right there and one two punch is going to be there for quite some time. 
Did you ever think maybe this isn't the spot for me because you had another guy come in and play the, play the same position? You know, I never thought about it because, well, at that time I had committed and I had, you know, done it before him. So, you know, I wasn't going to go back on my commitment. Um, I never thought twice about it. And, you know, to anyone out there that's being recruited and you, you see other guys that are committing there, it's not a matter of – and you talk about this when you get in the NFL through the draft. It doesn't matter where you start. It's how you finish. And, you know, you're going to have talent. If you go to one of these top programs – there's going to be talent year in and year out. But how you develop and you approach it, you can't shy away from the competition that's going to be there, you know, because that's only going to make you a better player. Um, and, and you never know in college, 80% of the time, it does not go according to plan. Either you're injured, um, you're not at the level that people thought, guy behind you falls out, grades issues. I mean, I can't tell you how the linear role of I was there as a freshman and went like this. It really doesn't happen like that for most guys. Oh, absolutely. I mean, all it takes is you get into summer camp and one guy tweaks an ankle, sits right. out of practice, you get in and you start lighting it up in practice, and then you're going to get more reps, and then it just builds from there. And so it's about how you, you know, taking advantage of the opportunity. So you are in a long line of, you're the backup quarterback, but scuttlebutt in the NFL is Matt Schaub's a starter type player, right? Um New England has it now with Garoppolo, right? They have to figure out to keep a guy like that around. It happened with Scott Mitchell. It happened with Matt Castle. It happened with uh, the kid from Green Bay who signed that massive deal. Flynn? Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. Matt Flynn. Yep. Do you get that same scuttlebutt about you if you don't get the reps when Mike Vick goes down? Was he injured that game? He was. He, okay. uh, I think the game before, he got hurt right before halftime, and I played the second half of that game. It was against Minnesota, I believe, and then... Um, so he wasn't ready the next So week. is there any way for you to have commanded the, the draft pick that you did and get the money you did and still have Mike Vick playing all those games? Like, is, can it be an exhibition game you show film on? Can it be, like, word spreads? Like, dude, so you're asking how you end up in, with the Houston Texans. Well, no, I know how you ended up there. No, I know that, play. but for the listener, um, Chubby goes to Houston to give up what a – well, I think it was two second round picks, and at that time, 07 and 08. Damn. And then we switched. I think Atlanta drafted 10, and Houston was 8, and I think they just swapped Swap. in the first round that season, so two two slots. And, uh, Do you think that would have happened if you were just uh, Vic stayed healthy and you sat behind him and did? Tore it up in preseason. Can you do? Yeah. I, yeah I is, think there it, can, is there a way to do that? Yes, it can be done. I, I think it's hard, uh, but. That's, you know, a lot of people think, and it's mostly veteran guys or entrenched starters, you know, take that preseason as it's just tune up, it's preseason, it's like glorified practice. But for young guys, oh, yeah. right. it is vital. And right. when you can go out and you can show with extended action, and I got a lot of playing time because my rookie year was Mike's year coming off of his leg injury. So we were very protective of him, exposing him in those games. So I got, I got a ton of reps. And putting that stuff on film, that's what a lot of teams and scouts go off of when they look at players around the league who can project to being a guy that can come in and play. And I think you can do it, especially at the quarterback position. Other positions you might be right. able to... You know, I get the sense word is going to spread. If you've got a big-time backup yeah. that, you know, maybe it's only exhibition film, but the league ain't that big. I mean, people no. know who, who the backups are that are real players. Yes, absolutely. And, and, and if you have the talent and you show it in some of those preseason games, they're going to find you. And then if you do it when you go into regular season action or whatever type of regular season or postseason, um, you know, that's when it, it's going to happen. Matt Schaub is with us live in studio. Is becoming a starting quarterback in a place like Houston, a phenomenal football market, major media market, bigger than Atlanta, you're getting all the reps, you're doing all the interviews, you're getting all the snaps. Is all of that fun, or is half the job great and the other half, like, I was happy to be a backup for some of those times? <laughs> no, I I, it was all fun. It was all great. You know, I enjoyed doing, going through all of that in that process. I mean, going to the city of Houston uh, was tremendous for me and my family and, and for my career. Um, it was a lot like Atlanta. Um, I think there are similar type markets. I mean, obviously, you got the stigma of going to the state of Texas, and, you know, everything's kind of bigger there, and the football's bigger, and they know it better, uh, you know, and I think – you know pretty well here in Atlanta too. I mean, it's a football area, and uh, you know I think that was, going to that city was huge, and it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed everything that came with being the quarterback. The pressure the all of that Absolutely. expectation. Loved it. Loved handled it. it very well too, as he made a couple Pro Bowls and was MVP of a Pro Bowl, and 
the community stuff you did there too, which goes unmentioned a lot. I think you built a whole wing at the children's hospital or healthcare down there as well. So yeah. phenomenal. So job why do you why why refresh us? Why do you end up out of Houston? And and what, did you know that was coming? Uh, I kind of foresaw that coming. Yes, I, I knew I knew it was going to happen uh, based on 2013 how that season had uh, unfolded. Um, Unfortunately, you know, things just didn't happen the way we expected them uh, with the expectations and what we had as far as players and ability in our locker room, and it didn't materialize. And uh, a few bad situations and unfortunate circumstances led to, you know, a 2-14 campaign. Job live in studio. He's a big, strong NFL quarterback, has been for 13 years, entering his 14th year. Back up to Matt Ryan here in Atlanta. There is a reason, Finn, we talk about why folks pay a lot of money to be a backup quarterback. Some would argue one of the great jobs, and you have earned it, right? Um, and uh, being able to, to prove yourself. Falcons gave you, is it a two-year deal? It is a two-year deal, yes. Um, and you pretty face, and you feel good. Like, you wake up on Mondays... <laughs> You make a lot of money, and you feel good on Monday and Tuesday. Matt likes a lot of money, more than you. He doesn't feel as good as you do in the morning, right? Uh, probably not, no. Yeah. I would think that he's a little more beat up, yeah. But it, but it is a great career, is it not? Yes, absolutely. I mean, I wouldn't change a thing. I mean, I, I enjoy what I do. I enjoy who I'm working with and, and the guys in the, in the locker room and how much an organization. How much fun? Finn says it. Everybody else says it I've ever talked to. It's not the games and everything else. It's the life of being around a bunch of guys and get to be, act like a kid, and um, and that's just tough to be away from. Absolutely, I mean it, it's it, it's an awesome career. I mean it's second to none in my opinion. I mean just to go and have some fun, play ball, um, you know it's awesome, and I pay doing it. And last year, is there something? Tan I mean, look, listen, there's no team that goes to the Super Bowl. You know, go oh, the chemistry on this team is amazing. However. Truly was last year this brotherhood thing. It, give me a tangible explanation of that. It is very real, uh, first and foremost. I mean, the season is so long, and when you get to this level and you've got so many guys that make so much money and have been to this, done this, done that, and try to bring them together and try to achieve one common thing, you know, along the way there's going to be little things trials and tribulations and things and hardships that you go through and if you don't have that closeness and that connection you're not going to be able to get through it and deal with a negative thing one negative thing will snowball into a lot of negative things and then you're done but if you can write the ship right away which we were able to do on a couple of situations last year and a couple of games a couple of mondays and put it behind us we were able to weather that storm throughout the course of the year and not let it become a big thing and so that brotherhood thing is real and it is uh, after you've been through the league and been to other teams in other places, you know what it looks like when you have it, and we have it. And that's why, and to me, it's good for two or three wins over the course of a season. And when you don't have it, it's good for two or three losses as well. And uh, our team just likes to, to hang out, likes to be together, be around one another, not just when we're going to practice, not just when we're going in the meeting rooms. I mean, guys, playing ping pong in the locker room is a big thing, and that. It sounds silly, but that is huge for just team chemistry and just things, you know, when you're trying to go out and achieve a goal on Sunday and get together, you know, outside the building, go to eat, you know, whether when you go on the road, you go grab food and you hang out and you, I mean, it's, it's, it's big. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so here's the thing. Um, I know you're supposed to leave 11, but we got to go to break. You haven't been here for belly up. It's a big segment for Sandra. She owns it, right? Okay. And when are you moving to California? When did you say? Like when I'm 50. Uh, like nine, eight years. more years. No yeah, chance. Pretty close to that, right? No. <laughs> no. And how many more years are you going to be playing? Um, hey, right now I just got this one right. right. So maybe five. Me. Two. What I'm saying is if you do well at Belly Up, which is a non-sports segment, and show some di some versatility, Finnerick's not going to be in that seat forever, right? So I know you don't really need the money, but you're going to get bored. Otherwise, you're going to do carpool all day. Right. So basically, your tryout's happening in three minutes. Matt Schaub, see, can he pull off radio? We'll do it at the fan, 680 93.7 FM. <laughs>